Thank you for joining me on my quest to find out more about the churches. So I downloaded a free tag template, pasted it to Microsoft Word, and printed it out. Using a manila folder, I measured the template and created a tag. I will be using tags and tippings to create these seven churches. There are tags available for purchase, but where is the fun when I can make one? This is a seven part series that will be displayed monthly. Once again, these videos are a part of my legacy letter and I would love for you to join me. I received a book a few years ago from a pastor who I still respect and thought over the course of time I had lost the book. I asked God what was the next series in my Bible art journaling process and he said the churches. I knew what that meant and was thinking, how will I art journal this, even if I found the book? Well, I found the book. You can read more about the seven churches on my blog. Now I'm thinking two series at one time, a lot of work. I will stay busy for a while. The cool thing about this is the work has already been done for me. Of course, I'll do a little research, but not much. I will summarize each church's history, focusing on the author's main points, and then create. Join me in a history lesson of the churches. I am using a mixture of watercolor paints. As you can tell, I don't really give product information, but if you ask, I will tell you. The seven churches were real churches in John's day. Today they represent categories or divisions or even the spirit of churches. This is part one, the church at Ephesus, the apostolic church and known today as the Pentecostal church. Revelation chapter two, verses one through seven. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand who walks among the seven golden lamb sayings I know your works your toil and your patient endurance and how you cannot bear with those who are evil but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not and found them to be false I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake and you have not grown weary but I have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first remember therefore from where you have fallen repent and do the works you did at first if not I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent yet this you have you hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. The breakdown of Revelation chapter 2 verses 1 through 7 is Jesus commends Ephesus by saying, You are a working church, a separated, a pure, and enduring, and an autonomous church. But Jesus also condemns the church by saying, You have forsaken me, your first love. Ephesus is not excited about God anymore. And even though they love God, without this spark, they are easily influenced by idolatry. Remember the correction for idolatry is to be given over to your enemies. Next, Jesus counsels them. He says, look, go back to the time right before you fell and take inventory of your spirituality. Just observe how you were and compare it to how you are now. Then repent 
and do what you did when you first came to me. And then Jesus challenges the church. He says, hear what the Spirit is saying. Not all professing Christians are filled with the Holy Spirit or even believe in the Holy Spirit. And then there are those who are filled with the Spirit that will ignore what the Spirit is saying. And then there are those who bear the fruit of the Spirit. And to those who overcomes the world through Christ can partake in the tree of life which is eternal life. What Jesus says to this church is much of what he says to us. Hey, I'm giving you time to get your life together. I have given you instructions to begin the process of falling in love with me again. So you can overcome this world and partake in the tree of life with me. Thank you. I love you for watching.